This is a beginner tutorial on Flutter Block. We're using Chopper for the HTTP requests. We'll be transferring images and information about the images. I'll be using a camera. You can use this free site, JSON Placeholder, if you don't have a Rico Theater camera. As we're just going to be grabbing API endpoints, text, and images from a HTTP server within the camera, you could use another similar API and follow the tutorial. We'll be using get and post with Chopper to make the HTTP requests. Flutter block will handle the state management. Flutter block is an alternative to provider or set state. Block or business logic component makes it easy to separate the presentation layer out from the business logic layer. If you're new to Flutter block, check out my previous tutorial that introduces super simple qubit explanations. Let's start with a brand new project so you can understand everything that's added into using qubits and chopper. I'm calling my app Theta Block Chop. To use Flutter Block and Chopper, we're going to need to add the packages using Flutter Pub Add and the name of the package. Let's first add Flutter underscore block. We'll also add the package Equitable, and we're going to add Chopper. Equitable makes it a bit easier to compare objects, and Chopper is the HTTP client that we're going to use to connect to the camera or to the API endpoint. Chopper uses code generation to make it easier for developers, so we're going to have to add the Chopper generator as well as the build runner. Notice I'm using the hyphen hyphen dev to make sure that it's added only to the dev section of your pubspec.yaml. Next, we're going to need to add build runner. Because Chopper uses code annotation, build runner will automatically take those annotations and build some code for us magically. Open up your editor to make sure that the pubspec.yaml file has been properly updated. Open it up using VS Code in this example. Check on the dependencies section. Make sure that Equitable and Chopper have been added as well as Flutter Block. Under the Dev Dependencies, look for a Chopper Generator and Build Runner. In my VS Code extensions, I have the Block extension as well as Awesome Flutter Snippets and Dart Data Class Generator. To make it easy to understand what parts are qubit and which parts are chopper, I like to delete everything in the main Dart, Dart file and just add only those code segments that's relevant to this tutorial. We can pare it down to the material app, passing the home a container, and then add the scaffold in later when we actually need it. Within VS Code, I'm going to select the lib folder on the left-hand pane, which has my files. Right-click on it. Way at the bottom here, it says qubit new qubit. Right here, the VS Code will automatically generate our qubit and our qubit state for us. I'm going to call my qubit theta. So if I look in the new folder that was automatically created, I see theta qubit and theta state. Theta is the name of the camera that I am pulling the APIs from with Chopper. To pass the information around, we're going to wrap the container with a block provider. As the qubit works on the basis of passing functions over and making them accessible to the UI, we're going to use the provider or block provider to allow us access to those functions. To use block provider, we will need to import the Flutter block package into our application. We are now connected to the qubit that was automatically generated for us and we'll put some functions into the qubit to run from the UI. The function will change the state. When the state changes, we have to rebuild the app. So I'm now using a block builder. The block builder requires a qubit, which was automatically created for us when I right clicked on it, as well as the state. If you inspect those files, they're pretty bare bones right now, but we're gonna start adding stuff to it. The advantage of the block pattern is that it allows you to set different states very easily. And it separates out the business logic into a separate file. So we're going to deal with the initial state of the app right now and just pass it some type of placeholder text just to make sure that 
we are accessing the state from this cubic pattern. The state will hold a variable response text that will be set by the file theta qubit. In the theta qubit file, we're going to pass it the contents of that response state. So we'll just put a string here just to make sure that we have something on the screen. We'll have camera response. So this function will set the state. Back in the builder, notice that we have both the context and the state in the block builder. That state has all the properties from theta state, that file. So right now it has the initial state and the response tip. So here's where the magic is starting to happen. We can tap into the state right here um, and then assign it to a some type of widget and display it on our GUI. If you're coming from a provider, this might look pretty familiar to you, but block has this additional way of naming the state so that you can have an if statement and if the state is the initial state, then you can set it to the specific widget. I think you can just see it right there, right? So on line 19, if the state is theta initial, then we're gonna set the response widget. So it's a slightly different model than provider or set state. And although it's a little bit more work to set up or organize the state, I like it because the initial state has a specific name. By checking for what state the app is in, I can now grab the the contents of response text from the state and display it here. And it looks like it's time to use that scaffold, which I deleted earlier. I'm gonna wrap a scaffold around the response widgets to have better control over the text formatting. So I'm just gonna wrap with widget and change it to scaffold. And the scaffold does require a body. We just have a few more things with the UI just to make it a little bit more pleasant to work with. Uh, it's always nice to see a more normal looking app, even though we're focused on just using the block and chopper patterns. I'm gonna wrap it into a column and then put expanded widgets within the column. There'll be two sections to the application. The top portion will be some type of response window that will either show text from the camera or from your API endpoint or an image. And the bottom portion of the application will be a set of buttons to control the uh, output from the API endpoint. So I'm gonna use the buttons as one of the triggers to change the uh, state of the application, um, at least to start, you know, start off the process. So I'll, I'll create the button below and call it info. And I'll use this button to grab some info about the API endpoint, which in my case is a camera. The button will eventually trigger a function from the qubit, and the qubit will actually then emit a change to the state. At this stage, I'm just trying to get the button to look a little bit more normal, so it looks a little bit closer to a normal mobile app. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap it within a row here. This will make the button a height look a little bit more normal, and then we can place multiple buttons on that row to control different API endpoints. So I'm gonna use a, a main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot space evenly to put the initial button in the center. And then as we add more buttons, they'll just automatically be aligned in a normal way. The basic point here is that the button press will eventually trigger a function that's gonna be on the qubit. The qubit then will change the state of the application. The basic concept is that there's a qubit, right? So it's theta qubit dot dart file and that qubit will then change the state and passes it over to the UI. You press the button, in this case, it runs a function that's in the qubit. So the way to change what appears on the UI screen, in this case, we're trying to get a response text from the API server, is you run the function that's in the qubit. So you have to write the function, and then you run the function, and then it changes the, the qubit itself changes the, the state by emitting a new state. We're not gonna set up a loading state. So remember that there's different states that we are changing. One's the initial state. The next one is that when you make an API request, you're waiting for the network to get back to you. So we're gonna have the state that's called theta loading, which means that the data is still coming down over the network. When you press the button, info in this case, to start the process of getting the information from the API server, which is the camera, 
it's first going to have the state prior to receiving the data where the data is being loaded. So in the main.dart file, we're going to check to see if the state has been loaded and then adjust it. So we're just having the if check of what the state is right there in the body uh, under the builder so that you can see uh, what's going on very easily. So we'll just say another if else if statement. And so if the, th if the state is theta loading, we're going to show a different thing on the screen. Uh, in this case, we're going to set the response widget to one of those circular progress indicators. At the current time, we have two states here. First is the theta initial, which is the initial state of the application. If you press a button, the application will move into a loading state where it's trying to get their information down from the network. Hopefully that's successful and it'll move into a third state, which is the information has been loaded. We first need to construct the state for when it's uh, loading and then have a, a, a function or a, a method here that will handle the, uh, the loading state when you press the button on the UI. So in this API endpoint example, I'm going to have a get info and that will connect to the camera and get the info down from the camera. To connect to the camera, we're actually going to use Chopper. So I'm going to simulate the network connection first and then after that, go back and set up Chopper. We change the state with emit. So we're first going to emit a theta loading state. Then we'll go back into the main.dart file and make sure that the if statement, so if the state is theta loading, then we'll show the circular progress indicator. We just need to go into the button here, and then the button will run the function that's in the theta qubit that will then emit the new state. So to actually access that method, we're going to use a syntax convention from the block provider. The, it's context.read, so pretty similar to just provider if you're familiar with it. And then in the angle brackets, you put the name of the qubit, which is theta qubit, and then dot and the name of the method. So after the angle brackets, you will need to put the uh, round brackets or the round parentheses from the read. So now that it's hooked up, when we press the button, the state changes. Yeah. To prepare for the data being loaded from the network, we're going to create another state with a theta loaded, not loading. This is ED to show that this, the data has already been gotten down from the API endpoint and it's going to be ready to be shown on the UI. So in this loaded state, we're just going to initially show text. In the future, we will change it so that the state can show images or thumbnails or a list of images. The first step is just to make sure we can get anything at all from the API endpoint. And the easiest thing to deal with right now will be text. Because I haven't hooked up Chopper yet, and this is just dealing with state management so far in this tutorial, we're uh, going to simulate a network connection. Uh, we want some type of delay from the API endpoint because you're downloading an image most likely in the future. So we're going to put up a, a future delayed for one second just to make sure that it goes through the state where something is loading from the network before it displays the next piece of text, which we will get from the API endpoint in the future. So that future delayed is a fake network delay after the information is received from the API endpoint. Then we're going to emit the new state, which is the data is now loaded. So theta loaded. And in this case, we'll just pass it a string, but it will be the response from the API endpoint in the future. We'll just pass it a string. Response from info API. We're hopeful that'll work in the future. Uh, for it to work, it was gonna need to be async await in front of the uh, delay. But uh, for now, let's just configure the state and check to see if the state is the theta loaded. And if it's theta loaded, then we will set the response widget to that piece of text. To get the response text, remember that we have access to the full state within here. So state dot response text will give it to us. And it's loading immediately because I'm not waiting for the delay. So go back into get info and set it up to be async. 
and affirmed the delay itself put a wait so then it waits for the delay instead of going to the next command. So now when you go back to the button change and you check it out, it kind of works as expected now. We can improve the readability a little bit by adding some padding around it so that's not all the way jammed at the top of it and maybe getting rid of that debug banner there which is interfering a bit with the response window in this demonstration. Okay, now that we have the block set up, we're in a good position to start connecting it to the HTTP server. But I'm going to put that in part two of this video, which I've already created, but I don't want to make this video too long. If you do want to get the code, you can just immediately go to my GitHub repo right now, which does have both block and chopper in it. The other thing is if you don't have the camera, you can easily follow along using Lorem Pixum or JSON placeholder. If you just search for that in Google, you'll be able to find it. You can also ask questions in our forum. If you want more information on Block or Chopper, give this video a like and we'll use that feedback to decide what to build next. I already have the Chopper videos built, so I'm going to put that into a format that I can publish on YouTube right after this video is published. Have a great day.